getting mad at um, <laughs> Alabama and SEC fans or national media folks. And like, there was a lot of people pointing out that like, it felt like the fix was in uh, where Saban does the interview talks about, well, uh, he's talking about the Vegas line. If they were uh, put up against TCU now. And my whole thing with that is like, what did you think he was like, he's trying to make the case for his team to be in the playoff. Like that, is, he doesn't have the signature wins. Like the thing he can point to, which is smart because that is true is Alabama would be favored against TCU. Like, and people rightly pointed out they were favored against Tennessee and they were favored against LSU and they lost both those games. So it's an immediately uh, dis, uh, proven point uh, for Saban to make, but he has to say something. Like if you're going to do the interview, like what is he supposed to do? I don't know why people get mad at this where Saban gets asked by ESPN to do a spot or whoever it was. Like, what's he going to say? No, I'm going to decline and not push for my team to make the playoff like what uh, this is my last year with Bryce like why would I not do whatever I can to get in the playoff like that's the whole purpose of the Alabama football program is to be in the playoff every single year um I, I don't know I don't know why there was as much uproar about that um well I but, mean when he's Nick Saban I think everything he says gets a reaction right yes. it's taken as gospel like when three years ago he said you know, great defenses can't beat great offenses anymore. Then every media personality in college football is like, yeah, great defense can't beat great offense. That's what Nick Saban said. It's, it has to be true. Mm -hmm. So it's just every time Nick Saban speaks, people listen. And yeah, obviously he's going to be campaigning for his team. And it's just also the hypocrisy of it, of just like, I don't know, how long ago was it? Two years ago where he's just like, we need to be worried about player safety. We can't be explain, expand the playoffs whatever preserve the regular season and now it's like you know maybe we should consider expansion like yeah we, I'm, I'm sure now that you're not in the top four nick you would uh, like to do that but i well, don't I think know it's a lot of coaches too look at it it's like the players don't care anymore i think that's part of it is the players don't want to play in bowl games right like these non-important games and i think when you've built the entire sport now around the cfp and every week is it like who's going to be where where the rankings going to be I think his point, and he realizes, like, Saban's smart about when he knows, like, this is what, I mean, there are so many different things that make Nick Saban the greatest coach of all time, but it's like one of the things is Saban kind of reminds me of Tywin Lannister when he just knows when he's won a war, and he knows when he's lost a war, and he knows, he, he like, he knew he lost the defense war, so he made the change, like, he still believes in his heart of hearts that that was the way to go and that was a better sport and that was like the sport that he loved and that he fell in love with but he adapted like he still admitted defeat but like he's still going to push what he, if he still believes that there's a chance his way could still work he's going to push it but once he realizes it's a losing battle he's going to pivot because he still wants to win national championships that he is driven to win football games that he's talked about it ad nauseum of like i hate losing way more than i love winning and the way to do that is to just, I mean, when go to the playoff every year and to have this mindset that like, yeah, I have my beliefs and I have my ideology, but at the end of the day, if the tide is going one way and I'm the last of the Mohicans here, then I'm not going to die on this hill. Like, it's just not worth it. I need to evolve with the sport or I'm going to get left behind. And the sport has moved to a point where, I mean, in 2024, we'll have the 12 team playoff. And who knows what the bowl season looks like? I think that's really his main point of like expand because like everything out like that just gives more opportunities and it's just that's where we're going. So we might as well get there. Like the sport is going offense heavy. We might as well go full air raid. You know what I mean? Like that's just the sense I get from him. Yeah. And I mean, at the end of the day, he's just he's campaigning for his team and he's yeah. going to say obviously what he's going to say to to help his team. I really just. We have to do something about this sport, honestly. With this playoff happening, like, Cade McNamara has now committed to, to Iowa. He's mm -hmm. in the portal. He's committed to Iowa. Like, is he is he playing for Michigan in the in the playoff? I like, don't think so. No, he's out. No. So just your backup quarterback? Well, I think just he was out for the year play? anyway. Wasn't Cade already out for the year? I didn't think he was out. I thought he was still healthy as the backup, but I could mm. be wrong. Um but that's that's my biggest point. People like there's this uh, almost just this doomsday talk around college football of just like you you're not ready for what you're about to see in the portal. Like it's just about November to be. November fourteenth, he was out for the season. 
Okay. It's yeah, like you're just about to see the most insane portal ever. It's going to be legitimate free agency this off season. And now we're going to add like three weeks of games into that month of, of things going on. It just it doesn't make any sense at all. And December is when all these kids are moving schools and their high schoolers are enrolling, all this different stuff. And now we're going to put more games on at, at this time of the year. I just I don't think we have any idea what we're doing with this sport right now. Like it's we have to have a signing day, a transfer portal window, like all that needs to be in February or January, like after the, the season is over. Like it's we're in this weird situation where because of the early signing day, the week after the if you're not in a conference championship, the week after the the season is over, it's the end of the season, but mm. we still have all these games. We're in this weird limbo period and we just have to do something about it. And it's just going to be, I can't imagine this trend, like this transfers going on while playoffs are three rounds of playoffs are happening. Like, I just don't know what's like, are, are you going to, do you have to wait to put your name in the portal? If you're playing in the playoff or something is like, is a spot now at the place you were going to transfer? Is, is it going to be, not there anymore because you decided to play in the playoff with your team like is is it going to be kind of how coaches are put on in that oh well we prefer you would you would it's you oh you want to coach the bowl game well we'd prefer that you become our head coach before that bowl game then they have to choose and and dip on their team like i just feel like we're in such this this crazy like chaotic era like we are not ready and what we just announced this is going to start in 2024 like I don't think we're anyone's ready for this to to happen and what what we have to do about it. Yeah, I mean, what I think is going to happen is you're going to see <sighs> what's happening right now with the portal is not sustainable. Like we made baby step progress, right? Where it's like you can't just enter the portal at any given time. Like this, the fact that this was not always the case is unbelievable that we're here. That we had to like put two windows in, and they didn't start off with windows. That's that's wild. Um, I've heard different theories on what you could do. Like, I still think transferring in conference should be a one year automatic. Like, if you transfer in the conference, um, then you should have to sit out a year. Like, there have to be some. But what's sort... the logic in that? I mean, why? Well, like, if you're why should we penalize going from the SEC East to SEC West instead of the SEC to the ACC? Well, think about Steen, uh, the offensive tackle from Vanderbilt, right? Like, he was really good at Vanderbilt, and then Alabama just plucks him. We're like, we need an offensive tackle for the year. Like, we're just gonna go and to, to go from the lower program in the conference. That's the and, portal. Well, what I'm saying is like, you don't want conference schools in your own conference to become feeder schools for the bigger fish that can offer bigger and l deals do you get what i'm saying like that would just be that's how you lose a bunch of fan interest very quickly where if you have a couple years in a row of your best player on a bad team like if luther burden left this year and then sam horn left next year and you just have and they all stay in the conference where like burden ends up at tennessee sam horn ends up at like florida or something and you're like what are we doing here? Like any, like why would we get our hopes up and like want to invest at all in any of these guys when if they do get good enough to leave, they're going to leave, and then we just have to start this whole process over again. Like we have to kind of root against our guys becoming superstars because then they might leave because you have the Jordan Addison factor, right? Where Jordan Addison was a superstar at Pitt and just left. Like that was just it. Like they Pitt didn't do anything wrong. They just didn't like allegedly like they just couldn't match up with nil like that's just part of it and he's left and i'm never like going against the kids because like they're going what's best for them that's how it works like do what you got to do what i am saying is that's why you have people in power to be like hey like <laughs> this is bad for the long-term prospect of the sport like you will lose so much fan interest maybe you change it to like if you're not if you go from one power five or you get like a one-time waiver um to transfer without penalty and that's it i mean they're getting so much out of this with the immediate eligibility and fighting the waivers because like justin powell was immediately wait uh eligible at washington state former tennessee basketball player he transferred from auburn and he's playing right away so he's played on a different college team the last three years in basketball and you're like i i just I don't think that's sustainable for the health of the sport. Like, I think you have to have some sort of guardrails back and fold. And I understand that it's going to be really hard to do that. You have to find something to put this up because you cannot have this much movement 
every single year or players entering the portal who are doing well at these schools and then just threatening, <laughs> not them personally, but people potentially in their circle being like, hey, this school over here is offering this. So we're going to put our name in the portal to get our value, check it out every single That's just exhausting. Can you imagine like how many coaches are going to be left that are going to want to put up with that? Like every year we have to do this and like resell our program and resell um, what we're doing and just talk all of our star athletes or even disgruntled kids uh, back into what we're doing every single year. Like that's not, that's not what even NFL teams do. Like you have a contract where it's like, you yeah. still have a couple years commitment before you have to have these tough conversations. Like it cannot be a year over year thing. Like it cannot be unrestricted free agency for everybody year over year. It just can't. No, I, I agree with all that. Are you familiar with, uh, the Bundesliga? Uh, hmm. The German, the German league. I mean, I know what uh, it is, the but German I, don't, I don't soccer watch it. Yeah. Um, Bayern Munich is the the juggernaut in mm-hmm. in the Bundesliga, and Bor- Borussia Dortmund is another big time club, but not, doesn't have nearly the money uh, that Bayern Munich has. And I'll never forget several years ago, they're they're play they're about to play each other in the Champions League final, like the European mm-hmm. champion, both of these German teams. And right before the match, it's announced that Mario Götze. Uh, Dortmund's like best player is going to sign with Bayern Munich the <laughs> next season. Or just like, it's like the week of the Super Bowl. Just mm. like, oh yeah, and Brady's going to be on the other team next year. And it's mm. just like, wait, wait what? what's that? It's just, so yeah, in terms of the competitive balance, like we, we're going to have to do something. But I think the biggest reason it's not sustainable is from the high school perspective. Mm. Like you've just, you're hearing all these different things in the high school recruiting trail of just like teams aren't offering high school high school players like they once were because they're going to go to the portal instead they want to get a guy who's been in college for two or three years instead of a high school kid that may or may not pan out and it's like depending on where you are as a program like that that's the better route for you and then you also are seeing just the the raw numbers i saw a graphic the other day like the last three years combined of the of the transfer portal i think about 35 guys or 35% of players from power five schools that have entered the portal have actually landed at another school. Like you're hmm. just seeing a lot of guys enter the portal and there's not actually another school that wants to take you. So yeah, I that's, you kind of have to protect the kids from themselves at some point, but I don't know. It's, it's definitely a, a slippery slope. Like I'm not really sure what, what they can do about it to put the, put the toothpaste back in the tube, you know? And like I said, not blaming the kids. They should do what they need to do. Go get paid. Go do whatever you got to do. Find a new situation. Like we all job hop. We all, I transferred universities. <laughs> not the same as Travis Hunter bouncing around, but like ultimately you want to be able to do what you want to do. And it's not on the kid, especially when coaches are able to do this um, willy nilly. And they can do this ahead of conference championship games, BCS games, whatever. Like <laughs> it, there's no penalty for them to bounce yeah. around. And as long as they can do it, I mean, that's how it should be. But I'm saying as like someone who loves college football and is worried about the future of the sport, it's like, I mean, there is a tipping point where, and like you said, maybe the difference is like, we'll eventually reach a tipping point where so many kids don't end up getting picked up that the portal is not as big as it used to be. We're like five years from now, there's so much data that programs can show these kids where it's like, you're not going to get picked up. I mean, sure, go check it out, but we this is the way it is now and this is your odds of being a star going somewhere else you know what i mean like the more data we have on the portal that these universities and these programs can show these kids i think you'll see it shift and i also heard from a rules from a rules perspective is is that more important to the governing body than the powerhouses poaching from the haves poaching from the have-nots i think that's also the just the the Alabama going and getting Jameer Gibbs and right. the, the USC getting Jordan Addison and Caleb Williams. It's like, I think that's the kind of thing that would, I feel like steer some legislation more than anything else. Cause it's just like this, this feels like free agency and this isn't yeah. really what college football has ever been. I mean, look at Trey Burton, like for every Jordan Addison where it was a seamless transition, there's a Trey Burton. It was worse at Alabama this year. Than Jermaine Jordan. Burton. Yeah. Jermaine Burton. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's no guarantees you can make the jump but there are no guarantees and the grass is not always greener but kids you're an adult 18 and up like you're able to do whatever like if you want to make that jump but i think there'll be more and more data on kids um who make the jump and it doesn't go 
the way that they want to go. And they may have left a good program that could have developed them. And I, I don't know. It just, I cannot imagine being in that position now with kids. It's more options for them. It's got to be really, really tough because the window to become a superstar, become a guy who can make a living playing football is so slim. The margin for error is so finite that like, <laughs> you're putting so much trust in these programs for a very small amount of your time to get to you where you want to be, right? Like, it's just, I can only imagine the pressure involved and they just want to make the right decision for themselves, but it's hard and there's no easy, easy answer here. But I did hear Bud Elliott on cover three the other day, make a good point that I had not considered enough. You heard this too, of like, part of the reason I think he said was the, that the portal is popping like this for this year is because no one saw any of these 2020 kids up close. So that whole class was just like video <laughs> recruiting. And like you didn't get mm. to go to games. You didn't get to go see them in person, get to know them in the home, all that kind of stuff. That there were a lot of bad fits because you were just taking kids based on some video that you saw. And you didn't really get to know if it was a fit. You didn't get to know really um, if they were going to work out at uni your university. So there's a lot of odd fits that have to be kind of that are just going to move out of the program because they just they bet on what they saw on a couple videos and did not get to recruit the same that they always have so i think the 2022 recruiting cycle may have uh caused a bigger craziness in uh in the portal this year is my guess and the i thought 20, it was interesting I the 2020 that. class in general yeah. just kind of yeah i could definitely see that uh as a as a hangover but in in terms of bringing it back to the to the playoff rankings right uh, was there anything that surprised you uh, about the rankings? Did I you mean, agree with? It? Did you agree with it? Yes, I did. Um, I think. I, I mean, personally, I would still put Ohio State ahead of TCU because TCU lost, and that kind of opened it up. But um, look, <laughs> I don't want to get people upset. TCU deserve two things can be true. TCU deserve to be in the playoff. TCU is not one of the six, seven best schools in the country. They're just not. And Based on what? Look, Tennessee and Alabama, they took care of business. Like Their strength of schedule is better. Both How? of their strength of schedule. So Tennessee was eighth. I think Alabama was ninth in strength of schedule this year. And you go through it. They didn't what take care TCU of business no, multiple on. times hold on. <laughs> during the season. Bama lost by a combined four points to a really good Tennessee team. And um, why am I blanking? Oh, and LSU, who ended up going to the SEC title game. They had their blowout wins. They took care of business by and large. We saw on both sides of the ball, they weren't Alabama of old, but they still didn't drop the ball. Like, they still, the difference with TCU, and I told you this for weeks on end, like, they were eventually going to get bitten because they played close with everybody the good, the bad. They never just dominated anybody. And the Big 12 is a significantly worse conference than the SEC. And Chris Sims made this point, and I, we'll talk about it when we get to TCU, but, like, what do you think TCU does against Tennessee's schedule? Do you I'm not sure I agree that the Big 12 is a significantly worse conference than the SEC. Like, Alabama didn't play Georgia, so that's the best team in the SEC. Mm -hmm. Like, Kansas State is a top-10 team. Like, uh, Are they a top-10 team in the SEC? I mean, maybe. Are they better than South Carolina? Like, South Carolina is the fourth highest ranked team in the SEC. Like, they were a pretty flawed team most of the season. LSU, is LSU even a good team? Like, they're fine. Like, they're 9-4 and four now. Like, Georgia just hung 50 on them in the SEC championship. Like, I don't think LSU is a particularly good team. And, and that was the team that was representing the West this year. Like, the SEC was not just some juggernaut of a conference this year and tcu like alabama lost two games by four points tcu lost one game in overtime by three points and they scored on third and goal in overtime like when they reviewed that play the guy the ball crossed the plane like you could see the view from over top like i don't know what the big 12 officiating is doing in that game because tcu's your your uh your golden goose here they're the one that are getting you the playoff i don't know why you're trying to get them to lose but i thought that was a, a bad call that that forced them to, to end up going for it on fourth and goal but that's that's tcu's one loss is it's by three in overtime there are only three teams top 10 in scoring offense and scoring defense in the country who do you think those three are 
Um, probably Georgia, mm-hmm. uh, Michigan, mm-hmm. and I don't know, is Alabama one of them? It's Alabama. Alabama's higher in scoring than TCU. They have a top 10 defense. TCU scoring defense is all the way down at 57th. Who's Alabama's best win? That's not what we're doing, though. If you're comparing Alabama and TCU, it's exactly what you're doing. Dallas Turner, Will Anderson on the edge. Max Duggan was taking a See, beating. See, that's – no, I don't care about that. Like, that's – it's about their resume. Like, yeah, we all know that they have no, better recruits. No, that's my whole thing is I said players. based on resume, TCU deserves to be in. That's what so I'm that's, saying. I feel like that's the end of the conversation, Well, no, though, what right? I'm saying like, is the, we can still have that conversation and say, let, like – the better games is Alabama or Tennessee in for TCU. Like TCU has no shot against Michigan. Like no shot, none whatsoever. And I just if don't they... agree at all. Like why would they have no shot to beat Michigan? Why is Michigan so much better than TCU? Like the Big Ten has been by far the worst of the Power f- Five conferences this year. Big, mm-hmm. It's had been better than the ACC. It's fourth of the, of the Power Five conferences in my opinion this year. Like Penn State on, is in me, the top I... ten. Like whatever. No one even really knows how good Penn State is. They they look. They look mediocre every every time you watch them play. Michigan and Ohio State are the only get two two good teams in this conference. So mm-hmm. I just don't know how to value what Michigan and Ohio State did all season versus what TCU did because I feel like there's a lot of competitive games with a lot of Big 12 teams this year. 10-point favorites, TCU, uh, or TCU are 10-point dogs. They opened against Michigan. In comparison, Ohio State opened as 6.5-point dogs against the Bulldogs, a better team. What I am saying is if Michigan What was Ohio Alabama... State favored against Michigan? Huh? How much was Ohio State favored to beat Michigan by? Uh, not much. It was what, three and a half? But Four? they were favored. I think it was like What's six the... or seven. Mm. And they lost by like 20. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like we, That doesn't matter. The like, talent's whatever... different. Oh, this is another part of it. The talent's different. Like they're not in the blue chip ratio. They're not there. Um, We'll see. Like I just, they're going to get the, blo- like they're going to get beat down. Like if they got Georgia, that game's forty point game. I mean, um, who's who's the closest team to TCU that that Michigan's played all year? Like, there's they don't play anybody. Penn State, that, Illinois. Yeah, like Max Duggan is way better than Sean Clifford. Like Max Duggan might be the Heisman winner right now. Like he's at least in the top three or four of the conversation. Hold on, do you think like, t- TCU would beat Penn State on a neutral site? Absolutely. Right now, I don't yeah. Think so. They they have like a fourteen hundred yard rusher and Max Duggan who's Heisman worthy like I I you wait who's TCU's best one um probably um probably Kansas State the first time around um maybe Texas Oklahoma State. None of Kansas. these teams are top ten teams. Tennessee's beating a top ten team. Alabama, I'm comparing them to Alabama. Yeah. Tennessee has a better resume than Alabama. Like I'm not. I don't agree with. I don't agree with Alabama being ahead of Tennessee. Like I think it's a it's a slippery slope to project that someone is after an injury. Like I just think that's that's what I'm saying. I think that's what happened. If I had to put my money on it, Tennessee would be ahead of Alabama if Hendon Hooker was not out for the year. Also, you want to talk? Put your money on it. If if there was an Oklahoma logo logo next to TCU's name, there's not even a conversation about this. Like they're undefeated yeah. and then they lost. Like there's no question. Like this is all anti TCU bias. Like don't don't hate on TCU because you didn't think they're gonna be there. You know, I'm not what hating I mean? on it. I'm saying they're giving us a worse game. So my whole thing is like I don't care about entertainment. The quarterfinals have been bad by or semifinals. I keep calling it quarterfinals. The semifinals have been bad year over year. Michigan and Alabama or Michigan and Tennessee will give us a much better game than TCU is going to give any of them. I am saying TCU is deserving. Alabama should have taken care of business in Death Valley. And I'm that, not and disagreeing, that they might but I'm be saying here. if we were looking for the best games possible, I think Tennessee's or TCU is like the eighth option for a playoff game. They just don't belong. Like They belong with their resume, but with the talent and what's going to happen to them, it's not the same. And see, I think this is why the automatic bids are so important for mm-hmm. this for the playoff format. And I think this is why conference championships are so important. Is because you play 10% of the teams in all of college football on on a given schedule. Like you have no idea like Michigan and TCU, did they play one one common opponent this year? Like you have no idea who these teams are. Like there's there's really no idea and 
maybe the Big 12 really was a bunch of mediocre teams. Maybe it was a bunch of good teams beating each other, and so everyone ended up with three losses. It is the only conference where everybody plays everybody. So, I mean, it's, there's going to be more losses to go around in the Big 12 than any other conference just on a year-in, year-in, year-out basis. It's like you look at Ohio State's schedule or Michigan's schedule, and it like, did they play anyone that was good from the West? Like, TCU it, it, is 64th in rush defense. Purdue was 42nd. Yeah, that's fine. They, Purdue doesn't have Max Duggan. TCU is getting their ass kicked by Michigan. Like, just write that in. Like, we are so afraid because we're, it's like sparing the feelings. Like, no, they belong there based on their resume. What we don't have to do is pretend that they're better than Alabama. What we don't have to do is pretend they're better than Tennessee. What we don't have to do is pretend they're even better than a healthy Oregon. Like, it's just not, it's not reality. But that's why it's just, it doesn't matter. It's yeah. It's, what I'm saying is, what as college a college football, football fan, I want the best games, and I want to see. Like, if Hendon Hooker was healthy, I would have preferred Tennessee get in, obviously. But without Joe Milton's not running the gauntlet, like that's not happening. Who cares? But Alabama would give Michigan a game. That might be a three and a half, two and a half point spread on, and I might even take Alabama in that one. And then we get Georgia, Alabama in the final. Well, if or Al- Georgia, this is or not Tennessee how college Bama. football works. They didn't yeah. earn it in the regular season. Well, this is a good part of the expanded playoff because we could just toss them out early. Like, and I'm not freaking out about this. You can just uh, light the grenade. This to- is the the worst part about the expanded college football playoff is because we all know Alabama did not have a championship level season this year. Like, it's just we know but what a championship in, on, level Matt season Green. is in college football. But if you put them in the playoff, are you damn certain they wouldn't win it this year? No, I'm not damn certain of anything that would happen. Like it's well, no, we're you certain that TCU's not winning the title. You like, open it up certain. to twelve team. No, we're not certain of that. I'm sorry. Are we now going down the pike where we're saying TCU has beaten Georgia and Michigan in succession? They're one of the four teams left. They have a they have no, a chance they have a to zero, do it. Zero, a zero no, percent. Chance. Alabama has a zero percent chance oh, to win the playoff. No. TCU does have a chance to win the playoff. Like they're no. in, they're one of four teams. How can you not have a chance? They don't have the players. It's not happening. I mean, Michigan just isn't this this juggernaut. That's just like they if they haven't recruited at the level of an Alabama or an Ohio State ratio. or or. But I'm just talking about this team that you just know is going to smash everyone they play. Like, I mean, this is kind of everybody. a surprise. But it's also kind of a surprise to see Michigan. Like, they don't recruit to this level of like top two. Where are they in the blue chip ratio? Like, I don't really pay attention to the They're blue 59%. chip ratio. What is that like? Fifteenth, no, twelfth? Like, uh, let me see. 13th. Like, they're not. That's yeah. what I'm saying. They're not one of the higher ones. Well, so no, Michigan everyone who's in the top fifteen, you have to be over fifty percent. But they Auburn and Florida are in there too, so it's like yeah. I take it with a grain of salt. Like the, those teams are bad, so it's it's not really it's not everything. And so Michigan. Well, it's everything if you want to win a title. Literally, no team's ever won it without it. Like none. It's never. I happened. mean, it's how long have we had this for? Like eight years like this I mean, blue chip no, ratio we should go back to the blue chips we can still see like who talent ultimately wins out in the sport like it, it matters we haven't been keeping this we don't have this data for that long right. to just say that it's never happened i'm just saying Matt tcu to obviously you can win and you know, they like, have a chance they're no, in they the don't. playoff but None. i'm saying michigan isn't just this team that's just destroyed everyone they've they've played like they you better they keep be- the same energy when we do our picks they you better pick beat tcu Illinois. sir I'm you saying they, pick TCU. they barely beat Illinois a couple weeks ago. The Ohio State game was back and forth until they broke a, like a couple 80-yard runs in the final like five, six minutes of the game. So it's yeah. like I just I don't know where this is coming from that like Michigan is just this, I don't know, this I, I mean, they did this thing where TCU force. didn't do it. Like, they took care of business in the Big Twin title game. Yeah, because they played Purdue. Purdue who, is a, a five-loss Purdue. Kansas well, State is loss. top ten. They Can- had three. They were one loss ahead, like away from being at Purdue spot. Kansas State is a way better team than Purdue this year. I, I don't think. Are we especially sure? Especially since Will Kansas Howard State took has been over. like this, and with Adrian Martinez, where is Kansas State? But they've had Will Howard for the last yeah. five weeks, and they're they actually look like a top ten team. I, I think they look like they, top ten. But. They'd be in the playoff if they had gone to Will Howard all season, honestly. I mean, if they were a one-loss Big 12 champion, they could easily be a one-loss Big 12 champion. can extrapolate Will Howard would have done this for 12 games. No. I mean, look at look at who they lost to, though. I'm yeah. just saying, like, Adrian Martinez was was bad. Like, he was not good. And they've actually been a good team with Will Howard. But regardless, it's been a, it's been a chaotic season. If a one-loss Big 12 champion happened this year, like, 
or if Kansas State was that, they would have gone to the playoff. And also, nine in the preseason top 25, nine of the preseason top 25 finish ranked this year. So, mm-hmm. like, all these preseason rankings and composite talent, like, people don't know what the hell is going to happen in a college football season. Like, you didn't think TCU was going to be here all season. So, obviously, yeah, now we're at the playoff. Yeah, we're still going to continue to doubt TCU, but that doesn't mean they don't have a chance. It does. No chance. Zero. But none. Matt Green, I you better hated... pick TCU to beat Michigan in a couple weeks. You better do it. We'll see. I'll have to get there. But and also, in are terms we forgetting of... what you admitted last week where you were like, yeah, we would rather have TCU than Bama, Tennessee, or um, Ohio State in the spot? You admitted it. Yeah, but, I, I mean, that's not – that's me in terms of projecting of who I think is going to be the most dangerous team for Georgia to play. Are but you not more necessarily excited about getting what, Michigan who's got the best or TCU or in the final? I mean, if TCU beats Michigan, then it, it changes how you view TCU. Oh, so it's like a it's like the NCAA God. tournament. You get to the final four. It's no, like, it's well, a buy. If, if you someone get TCU be- in the final, it's a buy. You can start Carson Beck. If you're playing George game. Mason in the final four, oh. and this is obviously not George Mason. TCU. They never won the title. Do you know how that story ends, Matt Green? But they my lost. point is, if you're playing George Mason in the final four, you're playing a team that just knocked off UConn and whoever in the two seed and the three seed. Like you're pl- like. They but obviously won the have title to be a that good year. team. I think Florida won the title yeah, that year. Another blue blood. What are we doing? Florida's not a blue blood. Well, they had talent Florida. everywhere. Joakim Noah, Al Horford. But what, whatever, whatever. Yeah. The have point, you noticed that the stars, generally speaking, went out, man? I mean, sometimes. Sometimes the teams rallied. Uh, hey, underdog the college stories ball. happen. Give me, the, give me the college ball story where that's happened. Give me the one. Look at the, look at the Ohio State. 2002, Ohio State wasn't better than Miami, and they that gritty, gritty bunch of players of Craig Krenzel, they they got it done. That Miami team is like the greatest team in, in college football history. How many history. NFL players were on that 2002 Ohio State team? Probably a quarter of the amount that were on the opposite team. Do uh, you remember that Ohio State team? Yeah. They won every game in like and they were in the blue chip ratio. To 10 and like 17. What are we doing? You don't, you don't it's Ohio State. You don't know they were in the blue chip ratio. Oh, my God. He's you, they, you, we, don't have, we don't have that data. You know we don't have that data. <laughs> Noted similar programs, TCU and Ohio State. Oh, my goodness. And the point is, Oregon, Oregon didn't recruit like some of the other big-time powerhouses when they were getting to national championships in 2010 and 2014. Like Mariota? Yeah, they. I mean, they weren't recruiting top five like every year, like some of these other teams are. They just they, they have were in a the blue chip ratio, system. though. I don't think you know that either. I feel like you're just saying things. Twenty fourteen blue chip ratio. Anyway, uh, let's, see. let's see. Going just back getting... to the rankings, because <laughs> I feel mm. like you keep getting off on the side. I just need you to admit, like, I don't know why you can't do this. I, mean, I don't know why you're hating on TCU so hard. I'm not hating on them. They deserve, I've been very clear, they deserve to be in, but we also don't have to lie about their chances. That's all I'm saying. I, I don't think they're Cincinnati from a year ago. I think they actually, they went through a Big 12, a Big 12 schedule and actually, like they played some good teams, beat a lot of good teams. And I feel like oh, Oregon paper, was at 41% in that year. There you go. T- stick that in your blue chip they ratio. They lost. What is the joke? What do you mean? They lost. Stick that in your blue chip ratio. But who no won one thought, that year? Nobody thought they would have even Who won in there. 2014? Honestly, I guarantee you, Al- Al- Auburn probably wasn't in 2010. That was a bad team. They just had Cam Newton on it. But it's not important. Are we talking about the Heisman, Cam Newton? Yes. What was Cam Newton as a pro? Never mind. I can't do it. We're, we're, we're going around in circles. We're, it's, we're, yeah, exactly. But <laughs> I just hated that the Boo Corrigan said that